All right, in this example, what we're going to do is uh, start with a hyperbola written this way, and we're going to rewrite it so that we can actually uh, figure everything out and graph it. So uh, I need to complete the square, and in order to do that, what I do is I rearrange it so that all the x terms are together, all the y terms are together, and the constant is on the other side. So now what I'll do is I will um, take the greatest common factor out of each thing. So really, it's the leading coefficient of x squared I'm going to factor out of the x terms. The leading coefficient of y squared I'll factor out of the y terms. So I get 9, and then the quantity x squared plus 4x, and then minus 25, the quantity y squared minus 6y. So remember, you're taking negative 25 out. So uh, negative 25 out of 150 will leave you with negative 6, um, and then it equals negative 36. So to complete the square, you look at the coefficient of linear term. So for x squared plus 4x, I'm looking at the coefficient of x, which is 4. Divide by 2, square it to get 4, and add it. Now I have to add it to the other side also, but what I'm doing is I'm really doing 9 times 4, so I'm going to add 36 over here. Um, so forgetting to distribute that is one of the main mistakes that people make, so try to avoid that. And then we'll complete the square on y, so negative uh, 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, square it, so that's plus 9. So on this side, what I'm going to do is I'm actually, uh, on the left-hand side, I really added 9 times negative 25. So I'm going to add 9 times negative 25 on the right, which is negative 225. And now uh, I'm going to finish kind of the completing the square here. So um, x squared plus 4x plus 4, that factors into uh, x plus 2 quantity squared. So it's the coefficient of the linear term divided by 2. So it's x and then 4 over 2 is 2, so x plus 2 quantity squared. And then minus 25, this will be y minus 3 quantity squared, and then equals negative 225. I'm gonna, it has to be equal to 1, so I'm going to divide through by... Um, negative 225, which gives me this, and then I'm going to rearrange it because I want the positive thing to come first because that's how I work with these. All right, so that's the equation that I'm going to graph. So if we move on to a new page, so I have my equation, and to graph it, I need to figure out uh, A, B, C, and then if it's horizontal or vertical. So uh, A is going to be 3, B is going to be 5 because A always comes first and B always comes second, and then C, use the Pythagorean theorem, gives me c is radical 34, and since y comes first, I know that it's vertical, so vertical kind of looks like that, not super. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, I have kind of a bad habit with these, because I don't really like uh, figuring out the axes, I'm just going to plot it without axes. Um, so the center is at negative 2, 3, so a huge mistake that a lot of people make is, if y comes first, a y still goes with k, where the center is hk and x always goes with h. So the center here is negative 2, 3, even though the 3 seems to come first. So I'm going to plot the center. So that's negative 2, 3. And then I know it's vertical, so I can move up and down 3 units. So one vertex will be at negative 2, 6, and another will be at negative 2, 0. And then I'm going to move b units uh, to the left and right. So that'll take me to 3, 3, and negative 7, 3. And what I want to do now is uh, the corners of the asymptote box and then dot in the uh, diagonals of that to get the asymptotes. And the graph goes through the vertices and along the asymptotes. So like that and that, and then kind of like this. All right, so that's pretty much my graph. I'm going to add the, um, the foci. So I'm moving up and down by radical 34, and that's really ugly, um, but there's nothing you can do about it. So we're almost done here. I just want to finish getting the information that I like to collect. So I'd like to know what the asymptotes are. And remember, what you do is you take the equation, you change it from being equal to 1 to being equal to 0, and you go through and solve. So if I do that, I'm going to ultimately end up with my, y minus 3 equals um, plus or minus 3 fifths and x plus 2. And uh, the eccentricity is going to be c over a. So if you're really organized, you'll get everything. Um, then I'm just going to list the rest of the things. So the vertices co-vertices, I like to use the plus minus, um, you might want to expand them, and then the foci. And that's one full example of how I would um, start in one form, transform it to the other form, and graph it. So I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.